This video covers the UMT30 family of ultrasonic sensors. There's links in the comment below to the different sections we're going to cover here, mounting and wiring, the ultrasonic diagrams, some unique features, uh, how to quick teach the sensor, and some advanced configuration options. The part number U is for ultrasonic, M is for metal, 30, it's a 30 millimeter diameter. And the rest of the part number is the range. Here's some mounting options. It's shown with other sensors, but we have similar mounting for the UMT-30. Um, this um, sensor family, they all have a display. It shows the actual distance in centimeters or millimeters uh, to the target. Um, it also has a sync mode where you can have up to 10 connected. Um, you just uh, tie the fifth wire, pin 5, the gray wire together on all sensors and they'll avoid crosstalk. You could also put it in multiplex mode where yeah, you could have multiple sensors take an average distance reading. There's also a low power mode for the display. There's filters. Um, you can have an output delay, foreground suppression, and you can select the sensitivity. Here's the part number range. We've got 350, 1300, 3400, and 6 meters. And each one of these is available uh, with either discrete outputs or an analog, your choice. And on the analog, it's auto-detect. Uh, if you hook it up to a 4 to 20 milliamp PLC input, it'll give you 4 to 20 based on the voltage of the input card. If it's a voltage input card, it'll give you 0 to 10 volts DC. This shows how you wire the discrete version. It uses all five pins. The white wire is Q1 and the black wire is Q2, output 1 and 2. On the right we have the analog output version. You can see the white wire is the analog output and based on the impedance of your input card it'll auto detect 4 to 20 milliamps or 0 to 10 volts. This light gray diagram shows the ultrasonic pattern against a flat target. You can see the width is plus and minus about 10 centimeters. And you can see the minimum range and the maximum range to the target. If we had instead this circle, this is the worst case target. And we would end up with a diagram like this, shown in a darker gray. It's much narrower. And you can see the line where we uh, publish the maximum range of the sensor. So if you have a flat, good target, you can actually see longer than the published maximum range of the sensor. Big F. And this is the combined diagram that we publish. It has both the light gray and dark gray superimposed uh, with the maximum published range and the minimum range. There is this blind zone in front of the sensor. You have to send the pulse out uh, to hear the echo back. Here's a close-up of the display. This shows actual distance. There's some two LEDs, one for D1, one for D2. Normally they're both green when you power up the sensor. Here D1 is on, it turns yellow. Here D2 only is on, it's yellow. Here both D1 and D2 are on. So this shows again the discrete outputs and the two teach buttons. T1 teaches discrete one, T2 teaches discrete two. And again, uh, you've got these indicators for centimeters or millimeters or percentage of the, that's the units the actual distance are displayed in. Throughout the rest of this video, we're gonna use the hand symbol to show you've gotta press or hold a button. We'll use the eyeball to say, you know, look for something. And here in the lower left corner, you can see we've got the symbol for two discrete output versions and the symbol for the analog output version. So if you see that in the lower left corner, 
uh, it means that it only pertains to that version. Everything else we talk about pertains to both analog and discrete versions. So this means to tap T1, that means to tap T2, and this means to tap or hold both. Uh, this symbol with the clock shows how long you have to hold it. Uh, this means you're not going to tap it, you're going to hold it for the number of seconds shown or more. So in this example we have you know, a distance of about 180 to 75.6 centimeters shown on the display. Uh, if it was closer than that it would show millimeters. Next we're going to cover for the discrete version how to quick teach the discrete outputs. First you uh, adjust the sensor to the distance you want to teach and you press and hold the T1 button to teach discrete one for more than three seconds. And what will happen is, on the display, it will say Teach, then D1. And you can let go of the button at that point. And then you um, have a chance to move the sensor to the exact distance shown. And uh, then you press and hold the Teach button again until the display says End. And then you want to test by moving the display um, to the to the position and, and look for the discrete uh, output D1 light to turn from green to yellow. And um, to teach D2, you do it the same way, but you use the T2 button. Here's a real world example where we're going to show quick teaching D1 and D2 at 300 and 450 millimeters. We're about 300. We'll press and hold D1 until it says, oh, no, until it says teach D1. Then we let go. And now we have a chance to fine tune the position to 300. And then we press and hold D1 until it says end. And now we've taught that point and we'll move to 450 about. And we'll press and hold D2. I'm sorry, T2. It says teach discrete two. We'll adjust it to 450, and we'll press and hold T2 until it says end. And now we've taught that for 450. So we'll bring it close, and we'll, you can see the display. Look at the top LED go from green to yellow when we get past 300, and the bottom one when we get past 450 goes from green to yellow. Next, we'll cover quick teaching the analog output version. You can set two distances uh, here 180 and 600 millimeters and that will correspond to an output of 0 to 10 volts or 4 to 20 milliamps. So to do this you put the target at the first distance and hold the T1 button for more than three seconds. And you'll see the display will say teach 1U which is like teach one volt. Then you move the sensor away to the next desired distance and then you hold T1 for more than three seconds again until it displays end. And then finally you test it. You move it to the first distance and you should have zero volts. You move it to the second distance and you should have ten volts. Here's a real world example of teaching an analog sensor. So as found, 250 millimeters is 10 volts and 300 is 0 volts. Well, we're going to reteach this where 350 is 0 and 300 is 10. So we'll start off at 350. We'll press and hold T1. It says teach 1U. Then we'll move it to 300. And we'll press and hold that same button again until it says end. And now we've taught it 0 to 10 volts is 350 to 300. Here we're at 300. It was 10 volts. It's going down. As we get up to 350, it's 0 volts.
So to get into advanced programming mode, what you do is you press and hold both teach buttons for more than 13 seconds. When you do that, you'll see the display will say, uh, hello, pro add hyphen on. And at that point, you know you're in advanced program mode. <clears throat> then, once you're in advanced program mode, you tap T1 or T2 to scroll through the options. It'll say A1, tap T2, it'll say A2, and so on. We want to go to A7, filter strength. So keep tapping the teach buttons until you, the display says A7. A7 here is filter strength. You can select P0 for a weak filter to 9 for the strongest filter. So once you have A7 shown, press, uh, hold both T1 and T2 together. Tap them together to accept the selection of A7. Now you can change the value. And um, so you tap T1 and T2 to change the value to, in this case, we'll choose P05. Once the, you have P05, your desired parameter set, again you tap both together and the display will show end. And all other advanced configurations are taught the same way. So to exit program mode, tap T1 and T2 together a second time. And then when the display shows the measured distance, you know you're back in run mode. Here's the step-by-step -step of what we just went through. You can pause on this if you like. This is the manual that shows <laughs> uh, the same thing we just went through. So now that you've gone through it, the manual may make more sense.